good Wednesday evening to you. This is Pastor Jones here at Valley Assembly of God, Hagerstown, Maryland. Welcoming you to our Thanksgiving Eve service. And I always love this service. I remember in years past, of course, sometimes it's not as well attended as I would hope. Uh, people are having company come in or they're traveling to be with family. I remember years ago we were pastoring Grand Rapids and uh, uh, my brother-in-law and, and uh, sister-in-law were with us. They were assisting us in that uh, pastorate. And uh, I remember our Thanksgiving Eve service. We lived a hundred and I think it was uh, 40 miles away from, from home. And uh, we were going to get in the car after the service and make our way uh, to uh, my wife's mom and dad's house. And uh, we gathered there with the whole family. And I mean, it snowed, it rained, it thundered. Uh, it was about a foot deep. You talk about a ride. Uh, some of the memories of, of Thanksgiving Eve services. But you know, God got us there safe and sound. We enjoyed family, but before we did, we enjoyed a time in God's house. And uh, I hope we can do that tonight as well uh, via the YouTube and uh, lay the groundwork for a great Thanksgiving. I'm in First Chronicles, the 16th chapter. I'm going to make reference to a number of verses, but let me use the first verse here, the seventh verse rather, as a text, if I would, tonight before we pray. The Bible said, Then on that day David delivered first this psalm to thank the Lord into the hand of Asaph and his brethren. Tonight, for a few moments, I want to talk to you about a song of thanksgiving and what it teaches you and I. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word open before us this evening. Thank you, Lord, that here we are at the Thanksgiving season once again. And in spite of the pandemic and other things that we've been up against and faced with, Lord, there's still more to be thankful for than not. And I pray, God, that you would uh, cause our hearts to overflow tonight with praise to you, to th with thanksgiving to you. Because, Lord, in, even in spite of hard times, you have once again proven to us that you're a good God. A God that loves us, cares for us, and is there to meet our every need. May you anoint uh, your word and your messenger tonight. And just bless in this Thanksgiving Eve service, we pray. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. This chapter throbs, if you would, with the vital teaching of Thanksgiving. The song of praise and thanksgiving comes after the ark of God has found its rightful place. In the midst of the tent that David had pitched for it. And after the sacrifices had been offered unto God. And the people of the Bible said, blessed in the name of the Lord. Verses 1 through 3. You know what this says to me, and I hope it says it to you as well. Thankfulness is sure to come. When God has gotten his rightful place in our hearts and lives. It's when you push God out. It's when God has been put two or three, four rungs down the ladder of your life. The things are not as they need to be or should be. But when he's put first, oh my friends, thankfulness will begin to flow. This song teaches us, first of all, what we need to seek, what we should seek. The word of God tells us here in the 11th verse, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. There is here a threefold object set before the seeker and set before you and I as well tonight. Seek the Lord, not the church, not religion, not ritual, not form, don't run after your friends. Don't run after certain personalities. Seek the Lord. Seek him. And he that findeth me, he says, findeth life. And this is eternal life to know him, folks. Seek his strength for service. They that wait on the Lord shall exchange strength to them that have no might he increases strength 
Maybe you're tonight just feeling like you're so weak. You're at an end of yourself. I'm here to tell you tonight there is strength in God. As there has been, there will be. Seek his face continually for fellowship. To have the light of his face is to have the light of his presence. Seek and ye shall find. And you know what? God will not disappoint the man or the woman that does just that. Secondly, what we should sing. Sing unto him, the ninth verse. Sing psalms unto him. If all the earth should sing unto the Lord, the 23rd verse. How much more so those who have been redeemed by his son and strengthened by his grace and spirit need to be individuals that sing unto God. Nobody should have to twist your arm, put your arm behind your back, pressure you into it, put you on a guilt trip. It ought to be a natural thing for you and I to raise our voices and to sing unto the Lord. He's been so good to us. Those whose hearts are brimful of thanksgiving to God are never at a loss to know what they should sing. They have songs which only can be sung by lips touched with the live coal from the altar of God. They have many psalms to sing unto the Lord. You say, what, what, what psalms do I have to sing? How about the songs, the psalms of deliverance? Has God delivered you from some habit, some sin, some predicament? What about the psalm of forgiveness? Has he not forgiven you, washed you in the blood, made you whole? Forgiven you a multitude of sins, said he will remember them no more? Yes, a psalm of forgiveness. How about the psalm of peace? The songwriter said, peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down from heaven above, from the hands of our God. What a wonderful peace he fills the heart and life of every believer with, even in a time of difficulty like we've been facing. Another of hope, a psalm of hope tonight. A psalm of joy. And that other which is the sweetest of all. The psalm of his presence. To know God is in the midst. To know God lives within you. To know greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. To know his promise that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. But be with you under the very end of the age. Can you not sing that psalm? Are you not filled with God's presence because of it? We would not be asking to sing unto the Lord if the Lord did not hear and take pleasure in our singing. He hears our singing as well as our praying. And as he turns his ear in our direction, does he hear you tonight? I pray that he does. Number three, what we should give. Eighth verse, the Bible says, give thanks unto the Lord. Twenty-ninth verse, give the glory due unto his name. The best thanks that we can give to the Lord is to live a life of grateful trust in him day by day. Just trusting God. Boy, that makes him feel good. It really does. We give him glory and strength. When we act as those who believe in his glory and depend on that strength. We cannot give him the glory due unto his name by merely talking about it, but by allowing that glory to fill us, that his name will be glorified in us. May the people we work with, may the people we live with, may our neighbors see in us a thankful heart. May the glory of God begin to radiate from our heart and life. May they know we've got something different than what they have. And may they inquire on how they may have it as well. What's the Bible say? Freely that you have received. Freely give. God never charged me for all the stuff that he's given to me. It's come freely at his hands. 
I'm his child. He's my father. And he blesses me with untold blessings. Give out that life and that love so freely given in Christ Jesus that others might see the goodness, the mercy, and the love of God. Number four, what should we remember? Thanksgiving is always a time of remembrance. It's kind of demanded on you and I to stand still and to take an inventory of what God has done. His blessing, His goodness in behalf of our lives. What should I remember? Remember His marvelous works. His wonders, the 12th verse. The Israelites were never to forget the pit out of which they had been digged. Nor the manner in which they had been brought out. Do you remember where God found you? Do you remember the pit that he dragged you from? Do you remember his strong arm that was flexed in your behalf to pull you forth into a new life? They were saved by such marvelous works and wonders as can find their only antitype in the life, the death, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We see in Christ exactly what the Israelites seen in God's deliverance from Egypt. And my friends, that ought to give us plenty to give God thanks about. We see here, secondly, remember the judgments of his mouth. In other words, remember his words. The works and the words of our God, our Savior, are inseparably bound together. The words of Christ they are spirit and life. And so are his works in us. The Jews wept when in their affliction they remembered Zion. We may rejoice at every remembrance of Christ. His words, his work, his sacrifice, his prayers. When he promised to send another comforter and he did. And we've been the recipients of the wonderful presence of the Holy Spirit. Thirdly, remember his faithfulness. Remember his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations, the 15th verse. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Our Savior has never changed. Our God has never changed. Remember his covenant of grace in Christ Jesus. And reckon on his faithfulness to all his promises. The sin of forgetfulness is a common one. God forgive us. We are so quick to forget. The songwriter so many years ago penned the words, Roll back the curtain of memories now and then. Show me where you brought me from and where I could have been. Oh, friends, let's not forget what God has done for us and in us to the glory of God. Which brings me to our last heading tonight, number four. What we should speak. It is well to remember God's works for us and his words to us. But with the mouth, confession is to be made. God's expecting something of you and I. We are to speak to one another. Talk ye, the Bible says in the ninth verse, of all his wonderful works. How long has it been since you've gotten together with other believers, even at a distance, and talked about the wonderful works of God, what the Lord was doing, how the Lord's answered prayer, how the Lord healed a sick body, how the Lord saved a lost soul. The Bible said they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard. You know, he's listening in on your conversation. He loves to hear you talking about him. The conversations of God's own people with each other are often such as must grieve the heart of the divine listener. How tragic. We talk about the weather. We talk about sports. We talk about the job. We talk about 
hunting and fishing and golfing, you name it. Why aren't we ever talking about the good things of God? If the works of the Lord are not really wondrous in our eyes, listen now. If they're not wondrous in our eyes, we shall not be inclined to talk about them. Let, let our conversation be as becometh the gospel. That the gospel, which is the greatest wonder in heaven, earth, or hell, might be spoken for our lips and be heard by those who do not know him. It may be heard by a saint that's so weak right now, they need to hear a fresh message of what God can and will do to lift their spirits. Lastly tonight, we are to speak of his glory amongst the heathen. His marvelous works amongst all nations. 24th verse. We who are witnesses unto him as our redeeming Lord and Savior must seek to spread abroad the Savior of his saving name. No other name given under heaven whereby we must be saved but that name of Jesus. Fellowship one another ought to lead up to missionary enthusiasm. A burden for the lost. A desire to touch somebody who doesn't know Christ. A desire to be about the work of the Lord. Blessed are they whose consecrated lives sing the song of thanksgiving, not just of thanksgiving, but every single day. Your pastor, this preacher, wishes you a wonderful Christ-filled Thanksgiving. Praying that the Lord will sit at your table tomorrow. You will sense his presence. Some of your conversation will center around him, around the work of God and what he is doing. And that at some point in time, you all will bow your heads and you'll offer prayer and thanksgiving to God for all that he's done and all that he continues to do in your heart and life. God bless you. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time together in your word. I pray, Lord, that you'll fill our Thanksgiving season with your presence. And that, God, you'll create within each and every one of us a heart of thanksgiving. If there are those that are unsaved that will sit around our table tomorrow, may our conversation, may our lives... Flow with your goodness, and God be a tool to bring them into a relationship with you. I ask you, Lord, to just bless the remainder of this week and prepare us, God, for a great Sunday ahead. We can't thank and praise you enough. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great day with the family tomorrow. God bless you. I'll look for you Sunday.